If you tell anyone, I'm from India, it's more like someone farted, you know? Another guy's following me. No, I'm okay, I'm okay. Jesus Christ, India. They say India is a very polarizing place. Some people love it, some people hate it. I think I'm leaning towards hating it right now. <laughs> this is... Dude, people are pushing right now. I feel like my abdomen is being crushed. Men, uh, just random passing by with Livia right there, um, reached out and grabbed me, were touching me, groping me. Um, this one guy walking by kind of leaned like his face was right here. Uh, and he just said to me, I want to f you right into my face with Libby right next to me. India is an interesting place. It can be both beautiful and dull on earth, often at the same time. Polluted, difficult, but also breathtaking. You can spend six months of the best months of your life, and at the end, you can be so frustrated, you swear never to go back. Many people hesitate whether they should go to India or not. They are curious about the country, but have doubts. At the same time, because India looks scary through the media, it seems dirty, messy, chaotic, lacking basic hygiene, dangerous for solo travelers and so on. When it comes to India, there are no neutral opinions, or arguably, it is not for everyone. It's either you love it or you simply hate it. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Thank you. Whew. No, I'm okay, I'm okay. Just, just a minute. Huh? Just a minute. What? One minute. But what? Uh, tuk -tuk. No, 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 it's okay. No, I'm okay. Thank you. Oh, my God. They're like, they're like flies. They just come to you when you get off buses. They're fucking the tuk tuk drivers. Disgusting. It's the most polluted country I've ever been in, hands down, not even close. If you are one of those hesitating, if India is something for you, keep watching because in this video, I will tell you the truth about what it's really like and why some hate while others love India. India can be a culture shock that in one moment you are fed up and in another you adore it. Who knows, perhaps it's a matter of personality because as much as people complain bitterly about the death and hygiene of the country, you will be surprised about how clean their temples are, leaving a lasting impression on travelers who go to the country for a more spiritual experience. Hi, Baba. Hi, Baba. Uh, Bali. Special place. Mm. Well, one thing I must say about India is mm. very dirty country, but the temples are immaculately clean. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Uh, little shrine. The Himalayas and Buddhist monasteries in the northmost parts can be described as some of the most cleanest places in all of India. But of course, we are tourists. We love our golden triangle tour to see the Taj Mahal further down into Mumbai, which are extremely touristy and can be seriously overwhelming. Delhi and Mumbai are among the 10 most populated cities in the world. It is almost impossible to keep track of the population because it increases by a million each year. The cities are overcrowded. It takes long hours to move from one place to the other. And the traffic, scooters, cars, bicycles, everyone trying so hard to use every tiny space to get ahead. You see, due to overpopulation and traffic, pollution is a constant problem in Delhi. Sometimes the smog is so thick, visibility becomes a problem for motorists. This is a highway in India, near Delhi. The smog here was so thick, drivers couldn't see where they were going. At least 24 vehicles were damaged, as drivers kept crashing into the pileup. In situations like these, the only solution is to move into the outskirts of Delhi, which is more modern, but not everyone can afford it. Whenever you find yourself in the big cities in India, one thing you have to deal with is noise. Driving on the roads of one of the most polluted and noisiest cities in the world is not just an assault on Narsing Pal's lungs, but also a torment for his ears. He has been driving his auto rickshaw for over 20 years, he tells us, in Delhi, the capital city of India. Braving through the cacophony of traffic and relentless honking sounds has now become routine. There's always honking as early as 5 p.m. from buses, cars, and motorbikes, which brings me to the question, do Indians ever sleep? Now, just let me know what you think in the comments. See, it is heartbreaking to see the number of poor people in India, considering how much the IT sector is booming. 
half of the city dwellers live in slums and many homeless in tents by the roads. It's also not so difficult to find children and women begging at every road crossing. One thing is that if you are focused on the culture of India, the monuments are kept very well, but as soon as you leave the hotel and tourist attractions, it's quite obvious India is dirty. Now, it's something that you can overlook, but the government seems to be doing something about that with projects such as Clean India and Green India. If there is something that we don't like as tourists, it is theft. And pickpockets in India is something you need to look out for. A mistake most travelers do is forget and show how much money they have in their wallets when buying something. Now, always keep your bag in front of you and avoid paying for items with big notes, especially when buying from street sellers. Most likely, they will get away with your money and never return. So pay with small notes and do not ask for change. <laughs> slowly ब्लेड चलाते हैं हार्ड ब्लेड नहीं चलाते हैं किसी के शरीर को नुकसान भी ना पहुंचे हमारा काम भी हो जाए अब जेब काटते हैं मजबूरी में काटते हैं one of the biggest problems in India is solo travel or independent travel. It is possible but not easy even for men. The insects are following me. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. India has an expansive railway network. It is a shock for foreigners once they arrive, especially for the first time in Mumbai or Delhi, and see millions of people struggling to get into trains to various destinations. Just crammed in there? This does not look safe. <laughs> this is general, general. This is a uh, wait, wait list, right? Wait list. No, no, without. No. Am I, am I about to miss this train? Dude. Oh, it looks like we have better luck. These people have better luck over here, maybe. Jesus. This does not feel safe. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. I'm in. Hello. I'm from America. Oh, Jesus. There's a suitcase on me. Oh my god. Jesus. Oh my god. This is so much. I, this is so much. I'm from Georgia. Jesus. Camera oh salute. Jesus. This is fucking insane. I'm in though, I'm in. Dude, if I get a cramp in here, I am fucked. Where should I put my bag? <laughs> you have your YouTube channel. Huh? You have your YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Foreigners usually travel first class for some extra charge because it's more comfortable and safer for night journeys. All right, take it. Take me, All right, let's look at our first class amenities. Okay, nice squatty potty. There are the plebes. There they are. Oh shit! My fucking flip flop. Sleeper. Sleeper. Oh, sleeper. I have sleeper. Okay. Oh wow. Oh, this is actually nice. There's air conditioning. My, my rib cage isn't gonna get crushed. Hello, hello. Oh no no no, it's okay. The thing is selling. Shit. Wow, that was very intense. I'm glad we did that. And I'm glad it's done. 
see, one thing is that these scenarios become a nightmare for many solo female travelers. We are no longer in the Middle Ages. It's a free world. But unfortunately, if you're a solo female traveler in India, it is advised to avoid going out at night alone because sexual crimes are common in big cities. Now, one other thing that shocks people about India is that when you're a foreigner, they charge you more for everything. Okay. 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 For 50. 100. 100. Okay, okay. Thank you. But again, it's something that you will have to learn if you want to be globe trotting because wherever you go to buy a drink, a meal, or even medicine, they will charge you more. But again, it's like part of the culture in India. And it is something that you need to be extremely good at when traveling. Nothing is free in India. It is a common trick for people to come to you at the monuments and start to explain a bit about the history with the excuse to practice English free of charge. But don't be fooled. In the end, you can't live without paying. Now, if you travel to Varanasi, which is the holiest city in India, it's insane. Don't try to get close to the cremation places without a local guide, let alone take a photo because if they spot you, they will chase you down saying it is forbidden and charge you heavily as compensation. India constantly teaches you something that makes you a different person. Now, you often hear that a trip to India changes your attitude. You start to appreciate your circumstances more and become more satisfied with what you have. That already is a reason itself why everybody should visit India at least once in their lifetime. Many Indians live in extreme poverty but are still able to smile and look happier than many Westerners who live in far better conditions. It is one of the striking things about India. Now, to be honest, apart from all the things that you can hear about India, it is the birthplace of four religions, Hinduism, Jainism, Sikhism, and Buddhism. The power of religion is quite overwhelming. Religious Hindus dip in holy rivers to get blessed and wish to die in Varanasi to get rid of the cycle of rebirth through reincarnation and acquire salvation. I will assume you've heard of the well-known sites people visit in India, but India has so many hidden gems, the Abaneri Steppe, the Forts of Rajasthan, the views of Udaipur, just to mention a few, but also not forgetting the erotic temples of Kajurahu. Surely the Taj Mahal is a sight to behold, but India has so many more hidden gems worth exploring. Now, if you know India, you will know it's a haven for shopping top quality products for a reasonable price. So cabins, jewelry, carpets, you can find everything. Most of their shopping malls have all the Western clothes for a better price. And when it comes to beauty products, the ladies will tell you Indians are a master in such products. Now, for me personally, one of my favorite things about India is how colorful everything is. Many women wear the traditional sari, trousers and blouse combination with a scarf in all. Lively colors dominate the fashion in India, which makes it very colorful. Now, the spiritual aspect of India attracts many people to find peace. And what is truly astonishing is the contrast between a country truly known to find inner peace, but yet can be so chaotic all at the same time. Hence, the India we love and hate. My name is Your Heritage. I am a traveler and explorer currently exploring my country, Ghana. Join this journey by liking and subscribing to the channel for travel vlogs and travel information across the world. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.